Well, our next guest saw the growing political divide in the country and left his Democratic comfort zone to spend a year among the so-called deplorables and was surprised by what he found. Former CEO of NPR, author of the new book, Republican Like Me, How I Left the Liberal Bubble and Learned to Love the Right. Ken Stern joins us now. You can start with Pete, loving the right. I was just teasing him during the break, Ken, uh, that uh, I wonder what you found on this journey. So um, I decided to do this book because I've been, as you said, increasingly concerned about the anger level in this country. And I said I need to leave my 93% Democratic ward and 100% Democratic household uh, mm -hmm. and see things from uh, 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 the other side. Um, so I went out. Uh, the subtitle of my book is How I Lo Learned to Love the Right. Because um, I met hundreds, not that I agreed with everything I, everyone I met, but I met hundreds of people sort of making extraordinary contributions to their communities. Uh, trying to do the best thing for their families uh, and trying to do the best thing for their country. Um, and I really did meet many people I admired and loved. So and that's from little. Yeah. So you met some Trump supporters that were not deplorables, that were not racist? Because I always say if you don't know someone that supported President Trump, you shouldn't be talking about politics because we all live in our cul de sacs, but you have to have a good understanding of both sides and people across this country. What was your takeaway from many of the people that went out and did vote for President Trump? They look, 62 million people voted for President Trump. That's 62 million stories. Uh, and I think we go wrong if we try to uh, uh, create stick figures of the people who supported them. Look, a lot of people um, supported him for, you know, policy reasons. Some supported it sort of because they were angry at the direction of the country. Uh, they saw that they'd been failed by both Democrats and Republicans, uh, and they saw a very different guy trying to, uh, um, who they hoped would do things in a very different way. Uh, and they certainly did get a very different kind of president. Ken, you ran a major media organization, yet didn't really know a single Republican. Uh, you know, for, for others out there, a lot of or Trump voters, uh, what does that say about newsrooms across America, in Manhattan and elsewhere? Are we ever getting a balanced view of, of the environment, let alone conservatives? Well, so if, let's, let's start off. It says newsrooms are like the rest of the country. They all live in a bubble. So th mm -hmm. just a... a um, uh, the Washington Post did this extraordinary poll during the, the last election in Virginia, evenly divided states. They asked Clinton supporters, do you have any close friends and or family members who are voting for Trump? And they asked Trump supporters the same thing. And over about 60 percent said no. They didn't know anyone on the other side. And newsrooms are sort of the same. I mean, they live, everyone lives in sort of their geographic and cultural uh, um, bubble. The problem but is Ken, just it's magnified when you have responsibility. It's not 60% in these newsrooms, right? I mean, it's 95%. And I, you know, I, look, um, they draw from a, a, I don't know. I don't have the data support, and I'm not going to go outside what I know. I do know that they draw on a generally liberal pool. Uh, I think a lot of these newsrooms, um, you know, the ones that I know, actually have great reporters trying to do great things. But there's a risk of uh, political homogeneity, and that, I think, is sometimes reflected in the reporting. Do you yeah. encourage other folks like yourself in the media world to, to take the journey that you did? I mean, how much did you change from that experience? So I change a lot. Um, you know, uh, um, when you don't know the other side, it's really easy to turn them into cartoon figures. And when you meet people, you realize actually how, what a moderate pe uh, uh, people the American people are, that there's a lot of nuance that people gravitate towards finding common solutions. And we lose that in this modern media and sort of loud social media um, environment we're in. We've got to break out of that in some ways. Um, this is just my journey, but the more we can encourage this kind of conversation, the better off we'll all be. D uh, did you get a chance, Ken, to see that open letter that Brian Mann, he's a reporter with North Country Public Radio, wrote? Uh, it's a uh, NPR station, and he basically was saying that he believes that you overgeneralized, among other things. He said, uh, quote, uh, the fact you dragged NPR into your pre-chewed How I Learned to Love the Hicks narrative <laughs> when public radio reporters have been telling conservative America's story with care and knowledge and intimate details for a long time, uh, he found ridiculous. How do you respond to some of the critics in these newsrooms who are saying that you've treated them unfairly? Yeah, look, uh, as a few people shared Brian's uh, open letter with me. Um, uh, so I would say one of the challenging things writing a book about, about polarization is that people have polarized response to the book, even if they haven't read it yet. Mm -hmm. um, the book's been out for four, for four days. Um, you know, I, I think um, what Brian didn't uh, give me credit for saying, which I do say, which is you could actually hold two thoughts in your head, in your head at the same time, mm -hmm. that newsrooms are filled with uh, um, qualified journalists trying to do, tell good stories um, and, and be intellectually curious and rigorous but also at the same time face the sort of the consequences of groupthink. Um, and, you know, I think the fact that people reacted in some newsrooms reacted so angrily to it 
um, I don't think actually credits the conversation. No, no organization is perfect. There's a real challenge in telling a very complicated political story out there. We need different points of views in it. All right. Well, the book is called Republican Like Me, Ken Stern. It's a fascinating read. I look forward to going home and reading it today. Good stuff. Good Thank you. you so much. Thanks, Ken. Thanks Appreciate it. it.